I actually, I am going six no in the division because the rest of the division sucks. This is the best division in football, Tori. Take that step back. We are seeing the true quarterback that he really is, which he is not a very good quarterback. Welcome to the man now where we taking over. It's time to give you them facts. Won't miss a game or two because we here for you and we reporting all of them stats. We coming to you live to keep you updated. Broadcast across the country, we the fan favorites. Break the volume to the max and don't nobody touch it. We cross the topics off the list addressing every subject. So if you ain't got a clue, then you can tune in and give it 24 hours and we back again. Breaking news, new scoops, we the top dogs. From the fields to the courts, we report it all. Buzzer beat us through your speakers, we the ones to call. Trust us for the news if it's got a ball. Giving you the top stories because we love the turf. Tell a friend to tune in and where you heard it first. Yeah, you're listening to the man now. We taking over, it's time to give you them stats. Yeah, you listen to the man now. We miss a game or two because we reporting all of them back. Yeah, you listen to the man now. We taking over, it's time to give you them facts. Turn the speakers up a little loud. miss a game or two because we reporting all of them stats. Because you listen to the man now. And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Buckasha here with the Man Hour. Be sure to head over to manhourradio.com. Check out the merchandise page. Check out the new and improved blog section as well. And I'm working on stats. I'm working on some APIs, guys, to get you some live updated stats over there. Update about every 30 seconds or so. Bada bing, bada boom. No longer to go to ESPN.com. Cover to manhourradio.com. Get your stats. Get your scores. Get all the NFL news that you could possibly need slash want over there at manhourradio.com. For, look for that update to come very, very soon here, guys. So t- welcome back to today's show here on the Tuesday edition of the Man Hour. We are going to be breaking down the infamous NFC North. That is the Green Bay Packers, Minnesota Vikings, Chicago Bears, and, of course, the Detroit Lions. Or should I say the Detroit Lions for all you Detroit Lions fans out there. Spoiler alert, I do not have them winning the division this year. I have had them win the division the last couple of years, and quite frankly, I, I I have to jump off that bandwagon now. Sorry. Sorry, Lions fans. It's just, it is, it is what it is. But let's start with the shock news of the day. And the shock news of the day, guys, is uh, we're going to talk rivalries. So as you guys know, the Subway Series is happening right now. New York Mets versus the old uh, uh, New York Yankees here. And the Subway Series is live, and it is, it is, it is happening. Hey, boys. And it got me sit down to like thinking of of like what is the best rivalry in all sports? People are saying the Subway Series like is like is the best. And then I got to thinking of Ohio State versus Michigan. And then of course we got trip stop. And and then we got uh the Cowboys versus the Eagles, Giants versus Washington, yada yada yada. But then I got to man, and then boys, what the hell is going on, man? Stop. Uh, but yeah, uh, so anyways, so the best rivalry in sports to me, hands hands down, thank you, uh, has to be Michigan versus Ohio State. I mean, h- how are they not the ultimate rivalry in all of in in all of the sports? Uh oh, you okay? I mean, just 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 because just I know players on the Ohio State team, and they literally have a countdown to Michigan. They don't care about week one. They don't care about week two. It is all about priority to Ohio State and how is that not the best rivalry in sports hands down so I want you guys to tell me in the chat especially Joe that little cocksucking motherfucker I want you guys to tell me all about who is the best rivalry in all of in all of in all of sports uh because I think it is Ohio State versus Michigan so let's go ahead and get it square square squared away of who you guys think the best rivalry is in in sports and uh, we'll have a nice little healthy debate here in the chat. So let me play that intro again for you guys here and get the boys back inside. Uh, and we'll be right back here on the man hour. I, actually, I am going 6-0 in the division because the rest of the division sucks. This is the best division in football, Tori. Take that step back. We are seeing the true quarterback that he really is, which he is not a very good quarterback. Welcome to the man now where we taking over. It's time to give you them facts. Won't miss a game or two because we here for you and we reporting all of them stats. We coming to you live to keep you updated. Broadcast across the country. We the fan favorites. Break the 
volume to the max and don't nobody touch it. We cross the topics off the list, addressing every subject. So if you ain't got a clue, then you can tune in and give it 24 hours and we back again. Breaking news, new scoops, we the top dogs. From the fields to the courts, we record it all. Buzzer beat us through your speakers, we the ones to call. Trust us for the news if it's got a ball. Giving you the top stories because we love the turf. Tell a friend to tune in and where you heard it first. Yeah, you're listening to the man now. We taking over, it's time to get you them stats. Yeah, you listen listening to the man now. Miss all right, guys, so this is the only place where you get truly live, raw, and uncut sports talk. The boys come in and bombard the show. And uh, I have to address some comments here. Joe says, bring bring back Combs. This dude sucks. Uh, okay, Combs will come back eventually, probably here in the next couple weeks or or like or like or so, Joe. So you can start calling him stud now and like and like instead of me. So that 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 would be fantastic. Uh, and then got my man Alpha Rob in like in the chat. He says, "What's up, Buck? What is going on, Alpha Rob? I am glad to see you there in the chat. What's going on there? Are you a little bit off? I don't know what's going on with those chats, but uh, yeah." Anyways, uh, the boys are still throwing baseballs around the house and throwing bats. So if you guys hear some random crying, that's what's going on over there in the old uh, uh, Buck household. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, so anyways, guys, let's get into the first segment of tonight. And it is the infamous fact or crap. So it is it is very cut and dry. And uh, it's simply people posted a sta- statement on you on on not on youtube but twitter at man hour underscore buck slid into the dms or give me a hashtag fact or crap and we're going to answer these uh accordingly so the first fact or crap of the night is about the old julio jones trade or signing to the tampa bay buccaneers so buck fact or crap julio jones to the bucks instantly makes them super bowl contenders again well my man this was uh, Tyler Faber that posted this one. My man, right, right, and blogs over there. Uh, Julio Jones is going to be 33 years old this season. So when I pulled up his stats, and uh, I, 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 I thought Julio was, was just, 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 just kind of blah last year. But looking at his stats, he still had almost a thousand yards receiving on 54 catches in just thir- just 13 games. This this was his this is his average his highest average ever with a with a ten point one yards per target. Uh, I take that back. In twenty sixteen, he did have a, he did have a ten point nine average. So he was definitely that down that that downfield threat for the Titans last season, and 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 did good things yardage wise. Just never found the end zone. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Julio Jones not finding the end zone. Right, only eight touchdowns. So to say that Julio Jones instantly makes a uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers Super Bowl cow, 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 or team, that is going to be a 100% crap, uh, Tyler, because unfortunately, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were already a Super Bowl team, as is. They have Tom Brady. You can never count out Tom Tom Brady. When you have Tom Brady on your team, you are uh, in the conversation of a Super Bowl, right? Plus, they got Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and Leonard Fournette. So, I mean, obviously, if 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 healthy, Julio Jones will be a solid number three receive, receiver. But that is the key there. If healthy. He only played 13 games last season. And he, I believe it was a hamstring that he was bothered with. So, as a receiver, you need your hamstring to perform. And, unfortunately, Julio Jones is 33 years old. So, body doesn't quite heal like it used to. Hell, I'm 33 and my body doesn't heal like it like it used to. And I don't know what's going on back there, but so so to say that Julio Jones makes him an instant Super Bowl a, a instant Super Bowl contender, no, because they were already a Super Bowl contender before they signed Julio Jones. So let's get that fact off. It's 100 percent crap on that one. Uh, so the next fact or crap, as let me take care of this real quick. Come get your boy. The next factor crap of the night. As you guys know, Chris Carson has retired from the NFL. He just played just five seasons in the NFL, and he will be reti- retiring because of the ongoing neck injury. Chris Carson, unfortunately, has had injuries his whole career. He he has not played a full season in all five of his seasons of the NFL. His rookie season only played four games. Sophomore season, 12 games. His best season was 2019. Only played 15 games. Uh, 2018, he played 
uh, 14 games, and then 2021, obviously, he only played four games with that neck injury all season long. So four games to start his career, four games to end his career, and he has officially called it quits. So is Chris Carson the biggest bust in our recent memory as far as running backs go? The, the word bus is thrown around so loosely. Like, it seems like it seems like everybody's cussing and whatnot and yada, yada, yada. And it just, this person's a bus. This person's a bus. This person's a bus. Well, let's be honest. Um, life of a running back is five to six years. Chris Carson would be going into his sixth year. He he has exceeded his life as a running back. The average running back in the NFL, I looked it up, was three years in the NFL. That That's from starter, that's from first round pick to seventh round pick, free agency, yada, yada, yada. The average running back in the NFL only lasts three and a half seasons. So he is above the median at that point. And then I got to look at his stats here. He averaged, he has been averaging right around 4.4 to 4.3 uh, yards per attempt. And, you know, in my mind, that doesn't seem bad, right? I mean, four four yards of carry, yada, yada, yada. But then I looked at it. Last season, Rashad Penny with the, uh, with the uh, Seahawks, obviously, played 10 games, averaged 6.3 yards a carry. Josh Allen, Alpha Rob, your, your boy, a quarterback, averaged 6.3 yards a carry. Lamar Jackson averaged 5.8 yards a carry. Jalen Hurts, 5.6. Tony, Tony Pollard, 5.5. As you guys see this, uh, the, the, the trends, these, these numbers are pretty, are pretty much five yards plus. Then I scroll down to number 30. A.J. Dillon, 4.3. So we're at number 30, and we still have yet to see Chris Carson as a, you know, popping on this list as yards per carry. And his is four point two from last year, and there's a number of players with four with four with four four point three. Michael Carter for the uh, New York Jets, Devontae Freeman uh, with the uh, Ravens, Clyde Clyde Edwards and A and AJ AJ Dillon all had four point three yards um, per carry. So finally, when you scroll down to number thirty five, you see Chris Carson come up at four point two. Yes, I know he only played four games last season. Uh, yes, I only had. I think he only had like 200 yards or 300 yards. I, I I closed the stat on that. So to say that he has been a bust, hindsight, I was going to say no because Chris Carson was a, in my opinion, a top tie, top 10 running back in the league. Just never could pan out. So with that being said, a top 10 running back in the league not panning out. It's, it's got to be fact. Yes, Chris Carson has been a bust. There has been so much upside potential with Chris Carson year after year after year, and he just he never finishes out. He he never you know takes that next step. He has yet to carry his team ever in a season, and that is definition as a bust. I don't know where he was drafted, but it doesn't matter. He was a starter for the Seattle Seahawks for four years, and he could never play a full season. He could never do this. He could never do 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 that. And and uh, it was just it, it 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 was just bad for him. So yeah, I I I, I got to go with the fact that he was a bust in this. Hey man, that wasn't cool. You want to go play ball? All righty. So uh, Joe says bad parenting, cussing in front of your children. So uh, Joe, my par- my kids were not out here. When I called you a mf'er, and maybe you need some parenting in your life, Joe. Like maybe you can figure your life life out. Trips out. Uh, main anyway. Like anyways, moving on. Alpha Rob said he's not a bust. He he did have I he did have. He's not a bust. Did he have high expectations to begin to begin to begin with? <sighs> Let's let's see where Chris Carson because I believe Chris Carson was drafted in the fourth round, if I'm not mistaken. Chris Carson uh, draft. Uh, but da but uh, Chris Carson was drafted. Oh, so he was a former seventh round pick. Wow, I didn't realize he was that low. So uh, as a seventh round pick, you you pretty much are not set on the team whatsoever, right? Like you are signed as like a free agent, basically more or less in the end. 
and you know you you like you kind of whatever happens happens nobody that is my most and uh so can i re can i retract my statement no because like i like i'm not going to retract my statement because he after his rookie year he did have those high expectations of being a top running back in the league so when your expectations are here and we expect you year after year after year and you are not consistently getting up like like up there, it is tough. So, yeah, definitely a bust. So, later, dude. Love you. All right. So, the next fact or crap of the night. It is geared towards some NFC talk here. Aaron Rodgers has won two straight MVPs, Buck. Tyler hit me up on man hour underscore buck again. He is a Packers fan, so we'll, we'll we'll let it slide. He says, fact or crap, Aaron Rodgers will win his third straight MVP. Wow. Didn't we speak about this, guys, last week or two weeks ago? And I basically said that Aaron Rodgers had to have, like, some crazy year, like 45, 46, 4,700 yards with 40 touchdowns with single-digit interceptions. And do we see that happening this year in Green Bay? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So we are not going to see a three-peat of the MVP. I don't think the NFL wants it. I don't think the the other people want it, right? So I'm going to have to go with crap that Aaron Rodgers will not win his third straight MVP. Not because he is not a good player, not because he is, um, you know, he is going to be a top quarterback in the league. It is just the fact that we don't want a three-peat MVP winner, just like we don't want a three-peat Super Bowl winner. It just, it just, it is not in the cards. So if I had to take Aaron Rodgers or the field, obviously I'm going to take the field, right? The, the, like the odds are in my favor, like, like at that point. But if I had to put a name on winning the MVP this season, it is going to come from the AFC and is going to be the quarterback that wins the AFC championship. Now, is that Josh Allen? Is that Patrick Mahomes? Is that Joe Burrow? Is that a wild card? Is that Justin Herbert? To be determined, but I'm going to put a name on it, and I believe that the uh, MVP winner of this year is going to be a dark horse. It is going to be somebody that we least expect I still think they're going to come from the AFC. Well, I guess they were in the AFC. They're they're in the NFC now. It's going to be my man, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield is going to win this uh, MVP this year. Baker Mayfield is going to be hot. He is going to be pissed off with the ship on his shoulder. He is going to do great in Carolina if, when he gets that opportunity to start and lead that team. So, crap on that, that Aaron Rodgers will win a three-peat on the MVP. My man, Dr. De- Dr. Detroit is in the chat. He says Baker Mayfield blows. Baker Mayfield doesn't blow. Blaker Mayfield arguably is the best quarterback in that NFC South. Over Tom Brady. Over Tom Brady. He says, is that Jared Goff winning the MVP? Uh, Dr. Detroit, re- refresh my memory. Are you a Jared Goff hater or a fan? Because uh, I know Luke G, he is a Jared Goff despise. I wish he would just get get out of town, yada, yada, yada. So, Dr. Troy, re, re, remind my uh, uh, memory on that one. Alpha Rob says, no, Aaron Rodgers not winning the MVP. Who is he throwing the ball to? I guess Alan Lazard. Um, they drafted that second the second year receiver, who is that? I mean, they always find diamonds in the rough in the second receiver. Devontae Adams was the second read, uh, second round. Jordy Nelson comes to mind, right? I mean, there's definitely opportunities. Uh, I guess they, what they lost MVS to uh, uh, the Chiefs, right? They lost Devontae Adams. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know who's really on the receiver court, to be flat out honest with you about that. LOL, golf winning the MVP. <laughs> I like. He says, uh, Doctor Troy. So this is asking if uh, if he if he's a Jared Goff fan or a hater. He says, I'm hoping for him to do well. Not a hater, but not a huge fan yet. So, Doctor Detroit, 
let me ask you this question. I mean, like, obviously, you guys had Matthew Stafford, what, nine, ten years, right? Everything was going, you know, as expected, I guess, in Detroit since they haven't won a playoff game since, what, like, 1962, was it, or 63? They have not won, basically, a playoff game since the Super Bowl era. And, you know, he was doing well. He was putting butts in the seats. He was making fans happy, doing good things in the like in the, in the, in the community. Why do people hate Jared Goff? Is it because he replaced Matthew Stafford or just the fact that we expect so much out of him and he's not per, not performing? Like why do people hate Jared Goff so much? I'm just I'm just I'm just asking. Uh says I w- I want to draft Van Dyke or Lewis next year either way though. So I I I have not looked at any of the pre-mock drafts or anything to that effect. Where do those guys fall? Dr. De- Dr. D- Detroit, are they second, third round picks, or are they going to be first overall picks? Uh, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of curious of what you guys and Luke G have been talking over there. And he says uh, they haven't won a playoff game since '57. Oh, my bad. Um, so Dr. Detroit says we knew we were going nowhere with Stafford, and we feel like Golf is just a little worse version of him. Just in general, people are not mad about winning. Well, I guess since you guys haven't won since 57, that is tough. Uh, I, I, was it ESPN that I saw this, or maybe it was on TikTok? I can't remember. But you guys have basically have had three, air quote, generational talents there because I, 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 I'm not sure they, they can really put Matthew Stafford as a generational talent, but he was the, what, the top quarterback in Texas, the, the, the best quarterback in college, and then obviously – onto the pros, but you guys have had Barry Sanders, Calvin Johnson, and Matthew Stafford and 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 and, and haven't won anything. Uh so I mean I I I definitely get the frustration there. I mean as a Chiefs Chiefs fan going thirteen and three several times in the regular season and getting knocked out in the playoffs by an eight and eight team, it definitely definitely sucks. But anyways, moving on to the next fact or crap of the night. We're going to stick in the NFC North here uh, since this is an NFC North show tonight. Justin Jefferson says that he will be a top three quarterback in the league. So, my man Tyler asks this again. Ty- Tyler has been on roll with the Factor Crap tonight at man out underscore buck on the old Twitter machine. He he says Factor Crap Buck. Justin Jefferson is at least a top five receiver in the NFL. So, when we... Every time I put people in type of any type of like ranking system, I do it off a of potential of going into the 2022 season. I do not look at the past performance. Yes, the past performances can weigh on your decisions going forward to, you know, so, so hey, I saw him get 1,400 yards in 2021. He has another year under his belt, but he do has, but it was so mean. Like, obviously, there are going to be some type of projections going forward. So, so it is all about per projections here. And then, obviously, we pulled up the old stat category, and Justin Jefferson has been a man among then his first two seasons in the NFL. 2020 played 16 games. He had 1,400 yards, seven touchdowns, and he had a catch percentage of 70%. Last season, 2022, he played all 17 games, uh, 1,600, 616 yards, uh, 15 yards per catch, 10, 10 touchdowns, and a six and a catch percentage of 65 percent. Obviously, he is putting up the numbers. I I believe didn't he break Randy Moss's uh, rookie record uh, for? Was it catches in a season or yards in a season or something to that effect? I can't remember for 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 for, for sure what it was, but it, he broke some type of Randy Moss record. And then I got to thinking of of the other receivers in the league. We have a Stefan Diggs, we have Cooper Cuff. Uh you have Tyree Kill. You can put him possibly in the like in the top 10. You have Mike Evans, uh Debo Samuel, you like you got to throw throw him in there. Keenan and Allen, AJ Brown, uh Jamar Chase, right? So then I started to break them down and put them in a top 5 order. At number 5 I do have Alpha Rod's man, Stefan Diggs. Number four, I have Jamar Chase. I think Jamar Chase is going to explode this year. Yes, last year he had a great sad second half. All season this year, I think he is going to a, to explode and have a great season. Number, at number two, I have Cooper Cuff. I mean, 
arguably the best receiver on the West Coast. No doubt about it in my mind. And then at number one, you had Devontae Adams. So where does where does JJ fall? If you guys were listening closely, he fell at number three in my in my top five that that I have here. So factor crap, JJ Justin Jefferson is a top five receiver in the in, in the NFL. Absolute fact. This this guy is a complete stud. This guy a year a a a, a like another year in the league. Quote the sophomore slump did not affect him whatsoever. He got better. He got stronger, bigger, faster, stronger. Hit the weight weight room. Had that connection with Kirk Cousins this year. Another year with Kirk Cousins. Another year in the weight room. Another year of the NFL off season. However, they are they they do have a new coach, a new offensive system. Yada yada yada. But it's supposed to be more pass happy. It's supposed to be more friendly, right? So, yeah, he's he's definitely a top five receiver on any list. If if you guys do not have Justin Jefferson in a top five on any of your list, I would like to see which which person did, did you put in there. Did you put a Tyreek Hill in there? Did you put Debo in there? Uh, did you put DeAndre Hopkins in like 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 in there? Like you know, who did you put? put in there but my top five receiver list going into 2022 season who who will have the best season to the worst season Devonte adams number one cooper cuff number two justin jefferson's three jamar chase four stefan diggs at number five so 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 guys let me know in the chat what your top five list does just 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 justin jefferson sorry about that fall into your top five i mean if he if he doesn't let's have a healthy conversation of why he does not fall in there. Um, make plenty of room for Jameis Wilson or Jameis Wilson, Jameis Williams. I don't know. Doc, I I heard Megatron would mentor Jomino. That's cool. Oh, I got a bunch of Detroit fans in the hat. What's 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 up, Doctor Troy? I see one pipe forty in the chat. My man Alpha Rob, Joe is in the chat as well. Drew will be popping in here shortly to moderate you guys. Make sure you guys aren't doing any, any, like anything crazy. You know, get those bad words out of there, I guess. Anyways, moving on to the next factor crap. I see a bunch of Detroit Lions fans in the chat here. So this is to you guys. Fact or crap. The Detroit Lions have the most upside in the in the sea North in 2022. Wow. So... When we say the most upside, do we like? Are we talking about the most room for um, improvement from win to losses, or for, sorry, from losses to wins? Or are we looking at most improvement as an overall team given the eye test? Are we looking at you know quarterback play, or are we overlooking at an overall thing? So when I think of, think about this, they have the biggest upside. I am thinking about the biggest loss to win ratio. So obviously the uh, the Detroit Lions have a huge room for improvement. What they won two games last year, right? Uh, and then we look at the other teams in the division. You got the Green Bay Packers. They they really can't improve in the regular season. They can improve in the postseason, in the, like in the in the, in the in the in the regular season. I think thirteen wins is their limit. Then you look at the Vikings. You know, they are probably a 10, 11 team, right? Uh, then you look at the Chicago Bears. This is coming from BC Combs, you know, the Bears fan himself. They're they're looking at a six win ceiling tops, right? Uh what from three to four last season to like six. So that's a two win improvement, possibly. So the Detroit Lions had three wins last season, and this year, I mean Yes, fact. They have the most upside of any team in the NFL. More than the Jets, more than the Giants, more than the Jaguars, more than the Panthers, like like etc. Like this team could legitimately be a playoff threat. This team could legitimately make some noise in the NFC playoff if the ball bounces right their way this season. Like if if we look at last season if they would have called the delay the delay of game on the Ray 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 Ravens, boom, there's your fourth win of the season. And possibly we could have seen a upward trend after that point. Man, we could have seen a lot more wins moving forward. So yes, the Detroit Lions have the most upside as far as, you know, their ceiling is a lot higher than the Bears, than the Vikings, and I mean obviously not the Packers, but 
when I say ceiling, like they they could easily get 10, 11 wins this season. Will they? To be determined here when we break down the NFC North. So uh, if you guys were here earlier, spoiler, I do not have them winning the division this year, unfortunately. They do have the potential, but will they execute on that um, potential, right? Now, next up here. I actually skipped away or no way on the other page. So th- this one is uh, geared toward the Vikings fans. Uh, so uh, uh, obviously you guys got a new coach this season, uh, a new general manager, new offensive system, yada, yada, yada. Kirk Cousins has kind of been in the hot seat in the Vikings for the last couple seasons. He's entering his fifth season as a Minnesota Vikings. As we look at the stats through the last five seasons for Kirk for Kirk C- Cousins, in 2021, he had 66 uh, per, per, percentage completion rating with 4,200 yards, 33 touchdowns, seven interceptions. Better than Aaron Rodgers, I might add. Uh, 2020, he had 4,200 yards, 35 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. 2019, 3,600 yards, 26 touchdowns, six interceptions. And his first season with the Vikings, 4,300 yards, 30 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. So he has been pretty good stat-wise on the Vikings rosters for the last four seasons. However, he has been Mr. I can't win a big game. I like I cannot win in prime, prime time, yada, yada, yada. So the factor crap that we have here, Kirk Cousins has to win a playoff game in 2022 to keep his job as a Minnesota Vikings quarterback. That is, a, like, he has to win a playoff game to keep his job as the Minnesota Vikings starting quarterback. I'm going to say crap on this one because he has put up such good numbers in the end. He has been, you know, winning them ball games. Kirk Cousins has won the Minnesota Vikings a playoff game already. Don't we remember the infamous Nickelodeon game when the uh, pass interference should have should have been called right uh, versus the New Orleans Saints? That was still 2020, right? And then that per and like in that game, he threw for 242 42 yards for one touchdown. Then they lost the previous, and then they lost the the, the, the divisional game to the. Uh, San Francisco 49ers and Kirk Cousins had a terrible game. 172 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions. So, crap, he does not have to win a playoff game to keep his job. The reason that I say that is because I feel Kirk Cousins is out at the end of the season either way. Kirk Kirk Cousins can probably lead them to a Super Bowl and still be out. Now, if you won this, won the Super Bowl, that'd be a totally different story because you really can't fire a Super Bowl winning quarterback. I feel like when when you win a su- Super Bowl, that basically by de facto facto gives you at least two two more years on a team. So I'm gonna go with crap. No, no matter how deep Kirk Cousins goes in the playoffs, because I don't think the Vikings will go to the Super Bowl. No, no matter how far they go, he is out as Minnesota Vikings quarterback. So, crap, winning a playoff game does not secure his job for the next season. Let me know what you guys think in the comments here. One one five forty says, besides Jefferson, a lot of that team is getting old. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, everybody has been there for five or six six years, right? Delvin Cook's, what, entering his seventh or eighth, eighth year Adam Thielen's been there for five years at least. I like, I like, I can think. I think he's been there since Kirk Cousins has been there, right? Um, who else? Me that, me, me that, 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 that whole defense is probably aging, right? I mean, it seems like seems like they've had the whole defense, you know, for at least three years there. It seems. I mean, it's just yeah. I mean, they're they're definitely aging, and it's definitely time for them to. Shit or get off the pot. Like, you know, that's that's kind of, of like the uh, time frame there. So with that being said, guys, that is factor crap for the night. And it is time, if you guys haven't voted over there on the poll at youtube.com forward slash man hour, who is going to win the NFC North? Right now, it looks like the Vikings are leading the way at 67%. So there's still time to vote, guys, here for the next, I don't know, 30 minutes or so as we do break down the entire NFC North. 
and we are going to start with the infamous Detroit Lions. Um, the Detroit Lions did go three twelve and one last season, and they did just they, they had the ball not fall the way a lot um, last season. Let's just be flat out honest about it. I think they nailed this year's draft. Wyatt did our did the draft analyst. The clip is up there at youtube.com for slash man hour. If you guys would like to go back and watch it, I believe he gave them a B plus on that particular draft. But week one, the Eagles come in to town to take on the Detroit Lions. Week number one. This is going to be a huge week for the Detroit Lions because they they start three of their first four games at home. And you have to be successful at home to be successful in a season. And I think they hold hold ground week one, beat the Eagles. The Eagle people are hyping up these Eagles, and, and I just don't see it. I don't see the Eagles really being that 10, 11, 12, 13 win that everybody is making them out to be, especially week one. They're going to be rusty. Uh, the Lions are going to come out hungry, especially at home, giving them the win. Week number two, the newly formed uh, Washington Commanders coming into town to, to take on the Detroit Lions. Uh, Carson Wentz, is it Taylor Henneke? Yada, yada, yada. Obviously, it's, it's going to be Carson Wentz. He's making like $30 million versus t- t- Taylor Henneke's $2 million. But the Commanders' defense is nice. They arguably have one of the top five defenses in the NFL with Jamar Chase, or not, not, not Jamar Chase, uh, Chase Chase Young and those boys. The running game is good. Scary, scary Terry is is a holding it down at the wide receiver position. The only weak point of this whole team is the quarterback position. Now, Carson Wentz does play well when he is in a NFC East team. I mean, obviously, he only played with the Eagles, but everywhere else, he's been kind of right. So, give me the Commanders. I don't. I, it, it hurts me to say because I, I want the Lions to do so well this year. It's just I, I, the Commanders are good. Week three, the first road game of the season, the Vikings come to town. As the fans over here in the poll have them winning, sixty-seven percent of them have them winning the division, and I have them winning the game as well. Give, give me the Vikings. Week three, week four, Seahawks come to town. Lions. Who is going to be the quarterback? Drew Locke, Geno Smith, it doesn't matter. Chris Carson has retired. DK Metcalf and Tyler Locke are the only people on the whole team, it seems like now. Of course, Rashad Pen- 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 Penny. Uh, but give me the Lions week number four. Week five, travel to Foxborough to take on the Patriots before we head into a bye week, week number six. This game is tough for me to pick because of the simple fact of that um, the Patriots seem to have the Detroit Lions numbers as of late. I saw a stat somewhere where the Lions are 0-7 versus the Patriots in, in, in their last set, set seven games. I, I, I don't know how true that is. I didn't fact check check it. But, you know, if it's on the internet, it's got to be true. But they are at home. It's still early season. Give me Fox, Give me the New England Patriots at Fox, bro. It's week six, we go into the bye week. Week seven is where all the fun starts. Coming off a of bye week, traveling to Dallas. This game is very, very exciting to me because this could be a possible turning point for the Detroit Lions of the whole season because we had the Miami Dolphins coming up. We got the Packers, we got the Bears, Giants, and Bills. A very tough slate of games coming up. But if you can beat the Dallas Cowboys coming off of a um, coming off of a bye week in your week seven game, and then you got home home away away, away game, then home home again, you could get that momentum and it could get you guys could get hot quick. But the Dallas Cowboys are much too good. The Dallas Cowboys are going to be a dangerous Super Bowl contending team. Cowboys beat down the Lions in this game. Week number eight, Miami Dolphins come to town at, at Ford Field to take on the Lions. My, I, I am down on the Miami Dolphins. I do not like them. I do not like what they did in the offseason. I do not like Tua. I do like Jalen Waddle um, as a player individual. I do not like him on the Miami Dolphins. I do not like Tyreek Hill on the Miami Dolphins. They, Tua does not make them better. On any other team, these guys would be a top five quarter or a, a top five receiver in the league, but they're not. Detroit Lions win week eight drove over the Miami Dolphins. Week number nine, the Green Bay Packers come into town. Aaron Aaron Rodgers has had time to figure out his new receiving core, uh, um, get the comfortable getting comfortable a around those boys. Yada yada yada. I can't have, have crap on the screen. Why did you guys let me know I have crap on the screen? Anyways, Green Bay Packers win week number nine. Week ten. Jared Goff versus Justin Fields. Is Justin Fields going to go through that sophomore slump? He does have a new head coach. That was actually a, th- a factor crap that we didn't get get to. My bad on that one. But the Chicago Bears are they're 
they are going to be a good bad team. Does 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 that make make sense? Like I, like, I know Joe's going to try to troll me about saying that they're going to be a good bad team. What the, what the, what does that mean? I mean, their how their their play on the field is not going to correlate into wins on the field. Does that does it make does that make sense to anybody? Uh, it makes sense to me in my head. Give me the Lions week ten, week eleven. Travel to, uh, I believe it's MetLife Stadium, right, to take on the Giants. Giants win this game. I like Shaquan Barkley and Daniel Jones this year. I think the Giants are going to be sneaky good this season. They could they could possibly sneak back in their way into the playoffs. And that would be really exciting if you are a New York Giants fan because it seems like every time they back into the playoffs, they win the freaking su- Super Bowl. Uh, week 12, I believe that's Thanksgiving. Buffalo Bills come to town to take on the Lions. Give me the Bills. I'm glad this is a this is the ten o'clock game. It like just again, it's like I'm glad because I'll probably be still hungover from the night before. Good gravy, that's going to be bad. Week fourteen, Vikings come to town. The Vikings are going to be a good team. They're they're going to sweep the Lions this year, unfortunately. Week fifteen, talking about Cougar hunters. Lions travel to New York to take on the Jets to take on Zach Wilson and the Cougar hunting himself. Are the Jets going to be good this season? I'm going to open that conversation up for people here in the chat watching the clips as like as like as well. Are the Jets going to be a good team? Are they going to finally put some wins in the win column this this year? Yes, I think they are, and I think one of those wins comes against the Detroit Detroit Lions. Week 16, Lions travel to Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, isn't it? To take on the Carolina Panthers. Give me the Panthers. I like the Panthers in that one. It's week 17, Bears taking on the Lions. The Lions uh, beat them at Soldier Field. Week 10, week 17, the Chicago Bears come into Ford Field and return the favor. Road, road teams win this year, and they uh, obviously split. Week 18, give me the Packers. Packers are going to sweep as well again. Uh, so that puts the Detroit Lions at 4-13 and 13 this season. Four and thirteen. They are improved from last season from three wins to four. Not terrible, but still not very good. Uh, they're still probably going to be last in the division because, yeah, they're just the way they are. Alpha Rob says the Jets will probably get six or seven wins this season. That's pretty good for the Jets considering last year that they, they well, they had three last year or four. Did they sneak out a fourth one last year? I can't cannot remember. My mind is really fuzzy tonight. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. Not going to lie on the fuzziness of my head tonight. Anyways, moving on to the next worst team in the division here, and that is going to be the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears also have a new head coach and a new general manager, and that's that's really not good for a rookie quarterback or a second-year quarterback because that, by de facto, facto, kind of mendo, puts him back another season, right? So a, a rookie season all over. Week number one. They open up at home at Soldier Field versus San Francisco for 49ers. The 49ers, this is a team that's going to be really good or really bad. I know there's a little thing out there on the whole interweb saying, oh, you can't say really good or really bad. Well, they can be either really good or really bad. Who is going to be their starting quarterback? Is Trey Lance going to be their starting quarterback? Really bad. Is Jimmy G going to be their starting quarterback? Really good. It's literally really bad or really good. Who's going to be the starting quarterback? Obviously, Trey Lance is probably going to be starting quarterback. That's why the Chicago Bears win week number one. Week two, Bears travel to Packers. That's Packers. Packers. Week three, Houston Texans travel to Soldier Field to take on the Bears. Give me the Bears. I do like the Bears in week three. I I do think the Houston Texans will be a sleepy, sneaky, good team. You cannot sleep on them. You cannot overlook them. So if a good team comes into town, the Cowboys, the Bucks, it's like etc. And they happen to be, you know, bringing their C game. Look out. They're going to win some, win some, cause some games, but the bears aren't going to look to look past anybody, but they do start the season out two and one. Give us a week four matchup traveling to New York to take on the giants. Is Denny dimes going to be the guy? I did a Madden sim simulator on Madden 22 and I'm, I'm, I'm up to year 2025. I think it is. And Daniel Jones is not the quarterback in Giants land. Obviously, this is a simulation. Obviously, this is a video game. This is, a bit, this is Madden. But Daniel Jones has to impress this year to be 
a Giants quarterback moving forward, and he does impress week four versus the Chicago Bears. Give us a week five matchup. The Bears travel to the Vikings, giving the Vikings. The Vikings are just going to be very, very good in this division, and they might sweep the division this year. Uh, giving us a week six matchup. Commanders coming to town. Thursday night game. Switching time zones. Road team at Soldier Field. Still kind of early in the season, so it's, they, it's still going to be fairly warm, I guess, with that lake wind, you know, kind of kind of warm. So the weather should, should, shouldn't be a factor, but give, give me the Bears. I like the Bears in this matchup. Excuse me. Give me this week seven matchup. Monday night football. Justin Fields versus Mac Jones. Battle of first-round quarterbacks. Fred, a second-year quarterback. This, this should be a pretty good game. I'm, I'm pretty intrigued about this game. But give me the Patriots. Bill Belichick, even though they don't have an offensive coordinator name, named yet, the, he will have his team in check, ready to go. Give us a Week 9 matchup versus the Dallas Cowboys on the road. Bears at Dallas Stadium, AT&T Stadium, I should say. Give me, give me the Cowboys. Cowboys are my Super Bowl pick, so obviously I'm not going to pick them to lose very many games. Week number nine, Tyree Kill and the newly formed Miami Dolphins coming to town to take on Soldier Field, take on the Bears. Give me the Dolphins. As we did just break down the Detroit Lions week 10 matchup here, I got the Lions winning the week 10 matchup on the road versus the Bears, giving us a week like mat- week 11 matchup. Bears traveling to Atlanta. The Falcons... <sighs> Are they going to be an 0-17 team? Probably. Bears win this game. Week 12, Jets versus Bears. Give me the Jets. I do like the Jets in this game. I, I Like I said, I Tory Anderson, you know, if you guys remember about three months ago, actually, it was what, six months, seven months ago, he was saying that Zach Wilson is going to be a bust in, like, in the, you know, as a quarterback. And the Jets have been drafting very good around him. They've been putting a pretty good line. They've been sneakily putting together a really, really good team. They're missing a couple pieces here or there to really make like a playoff push or, or anything, but they're going to win. Like I said, like like I've said, six or seven wins. I, I kind of like that mark from him. One of those wins are going to come against the Bears. Week 13, Packers coming to town. Now, I had the Packers sweeping the Detroit Lions. I had the Vikings sweeping the Detroit Lions as like as well. But I do not see the Packers sweeping the Chicago Bears this season. With that being said, we had the Packers winning the week two matchup. So by default, I have to pick the Bears to win week 13 matchup. But going into a bye week, week 14, could they be licking their wounds like at this point? Could they be trying to struggle to get into the bye week? I mean, right now we're sitting at four wins. You know, could we be looking at a quarterback quarterback change? Could we be looking at something different? Uh, but I'm picking the Bears to win this game at home going into the bye week. Week 14 bye week. Much needed bye week. Late bye week. Week, week 15, the Eagles come into town. Man. Give me the Eagles. I I, I I don't like the Eagles. Week 16, the Buffalo Bills coming to town. Give me the Buffalo Bills. They don't have a chance. Bears do not have a chance versus the Buff- Buffalo Bills. Give us the week 17 matchup. Bears versus Lions. As we just said previously, I see the Lions and Bears splitting this season. Lions have already won one game on the road, so give me the Bears on the road versus the Lions. Give us a week 18 matchup. The Vikings taking on the Chicago Bears. Bears are at home. Give me the Vikings. Giving us a 6-11 and 11 record for the Chicago Bears this season. And this is going to be a sloppy six wins. They're, they're not going to be... I don't anticipate the Bears putting together a 60-minute a game. I don't anticipate the Bears, you know, really dominating one game. They're, they're going to maybe jump out in a lead early, first, second, third quarter, and then kind of hang on to the very end in, in, in like a lot of these wins versus the Commanders, uh, versus the Lions, versus the Falcons. There's there's there, there's going to be a lot of sloppy wins. They're like when you're scratching your head like, man, Justin Field threw, threw for like 110 yards and they rushed for 60 yards. How did, like, how did they win this game? It just, it's, it's, it's going to be a battle of uh, 
attrition, and they're going to win a lot of those battles of attrition and sloppy play, but they do get six wins on the season. So, so far, guys, I got the Lions going 4-13 and 13 this season. The Chicago Bears going 6-11 and 11 and finishing 4th and 3rd in the respective divisions. So, with that being said, we do have the Green Bay Packers up next, and the, back, and the Packers do start on the road versus the Minnesota Soda Vikings. Is it too early in week one to say that this game will decide the, will side, will decide the division? I don't think so because they do play week 17 again and the and the and the and the division might be decided by that point. So this week 1 game 1 of the NFL season, Green Bay Packers versus the Minnesota Vikings is a must win for both teams. Yes, I know you cannot say you have to have a must win week 1. This is a must win week 1. This game will decide the division. And I'm picking the Minnesota Vikings to win this week 1 game over the Green Bay Packers. It is uh, Aaron Aaron Rodgers is still trying to find that trust with with his receivers, with his new teammates. Him looking like Mister uh, was it Bruce Willis off of Con Air? Like I mean, the the man is so worried about his looks and image off the field and this this and this and that he is not worried about make, building building a relationship with his teammates. Week one, and that's why the Vikings win this game. Week number two, the Bears coming to town. The Packers win this game. Week three, another huge game for the Green Bay Packers. They travel down to Tampa to take on Julio Jones and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the newly signed Julio Jones. Give me the Buccaneers in this game. I think the Packers are going to start off a little bit rusty. Yes, they did beat a bad Chicago Bears team, but that doesn't mean nothing. They're going to be very, very rusty. Give us a week four matchup. The Patriots come into town. Take on the uh, take on the Packers. Give me the Patriots week number four. Are, are we really going to see a one and three start for the Green Bay Packers? Yes, yes, we are, my friends. The Packers have a tough schedule, and their tough schedule gets a little bit easier week five through seven, a little bit. When the Giants come into town week, week five, they finally get back on the winning path Give us a second win of the season over the New York football Giants. Give us a week six matchup with another New York team. The New York Jets come into town, and they win that game as well. So they, they have now won two games in a row, and all you major league league fans, if you win one more, that's three in a row, and that's called a winning streak, right? Do they get a winning streak versus the Commanders when they travel to Washington, D.C. week seven? Yes. Yes, they do. The Packers are, are, like, are now 500 Going into this week eight matchup, actually they can't be five hundred. Going to week eight matchup, they are three that they are four and three, so they're back above five five hundred. Going into the week eight matchup, traveling to Buffalo to take on the Buffalo Bills. This is a potential, a potential Super Bowl matchup. Now, I we all know Aaron Rodgers shits the bed in the playoffs. We all know that he can only make it to the. He is always the bridesmaid. He's never the bride, right? Yes, he's been the bridesmaid. One thing got divorced, whatever, right? But with that being said, Buffalo Bills coming off a bye week, a hot Green Bay Packers team coming into to town. I am going to pick the Green Bay Packers to go into Buffalo to upset them. Give them now four wins in a row. The Packers are getting hot. Give us a week nine matchup back on the road, going to four field to take on the Detroit Lions. They win another game for five wins in a row. The Packers now are six and three on the season. They are getting hot and they are looking spicy. Week number 10, Mike McCarty, Dak Prescott, Zeke Elliott, Super Bowl containing Dallas Cowboys coming to town fresh off of bye week. Mike McCarty's first Return back to Lambeau Field since being let go a couple years ago. And Mike McCarty is going to come out firing. He is going to come out looking pissed off and ready to roll. He's probably going to get booed coming onto Lambeau Field. Yes, I know they won a Super Bowl with him, yada, 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 but that's besides the point. The point is, is hey, you are our old head coach and we don't like you. There's, there's going to be a lot of energy, a lot of tension in this room, on this field, in this whole game. 
this is probably going to be a flex game. They're probably going to make it a Sunday night primetime game. I, I think it's a Sunday night primetime game, but it doesn't matter. Cowboys win this game. The Cowboys go into Lambeau Field and upset the Green Bay Packers after the Packers have won one, have won five in a row. Give us a week 11 matchup Thursday night game. Titans come into town to take on the Packers. Aaron Rodgers is still pissed off. Aaron Rodgers is upset that Mike McCarty came in and whooped that ass. Aaron Rodgers lights the stadium up Thursday night. I would love to be there in that game because this 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 game is going to be over at, at like halftime. King Henry is going to get grounded. Ryan Tannehill is going to have to throw the ball all over the field. He's going to probably throw three or four interceptions. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers could, could throw three or four touchdowns in the first quarter. It's, it's going to be an ugly, ugly game. Week 12 matchup. Packers travel to Philly to take on the Eagles. Now, previously I was dogging the Eagles that I that I'm not sold sold on them. Like I like I I I think they are going to I think the people are overhyping them a little bit. So with that being said, with all that being said, I'm picking the Eagles to beat the Packers week twelve. So as hot as the Packers were earlier in the season, week five through week ten, or through week nine, winning five games in a row. They're starting on a downslide here. They have won one of their last four going into the bye week. Give us a week 15 matchup. Monday night game, the Rams come into town. Green Bay Packers are right now are sitting at what it's in at seven and six on the season. The Rams come to town, former Super Bowl champs, or uh, they, they're reigning Super Bowl champs, I should say. Monday night game, the bye week has really motivated the Green Bay Packers. They are like, kind of on the outside of looking in, of winning this division, and they do win this Monday night game versus the L.A. Rams. Give us the Week 16 matchup versus the Miami Dolphins. They win that game as well. The heat is very, very good for the boys there. Give us a Week 17 matchup. Minnesota Vikings coming to town to take on the Green Bay Packers. Packers are sitting at 9-6 and six right now. If they win this game, they will finish the season 11-6. and Because we do have them beating the Lions week, eight, week 18. Does 11-6 and six win this division? Possibly. But... I had the Vikings coming into Lambeau Field and beating the Green Bay Packers, finishing the Green Bay Packers season at 10 and 7. So I have Aaron Rodgers not getting 13, 14 wins. I have him getting 10 wins this season, 10 and 7. Excuse me, guys. Sorry about that. <coughs> so Green Bay Packers going 10 and 7 this season, giving us the last, the last team to break down here, and that is the Minnesota Vikings. So I do have the Minnesota Vikings winning every division game this season. I have been going 6-0 in the division. And if you look at the rest of their schedule, it's not terrible. They play the Giants. They play the Colts. They play the they 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 play the Jets. They play the Cardinals, which is going to be bad, a bad team. And they play the Eagles and the Dolphins. All very, very winnable game. So right now, we have them at 6-0. and So let me chalk up some losses for you. They will lose to the Saints, week number four. They will lose to the Buffalo Bills, week 10. They will lose to the Patriots, week 12, Thursday night game. And then they will lose to the Giants, week 16 game at home. Give us a 9-4 nine, a nine and four record right now. Let me pop in those wins over the Eagles, let me pop in that win over the Dolphins, let me pop in that win over the Commanders, let me pop in that win over the Cowboys and Jets, giving us a 13-4 and record for the Minnesota Vikings this season. Wow. Kirk Cousins is going to go win an MVP. Justin Jefferson is going to win the Offensive Player of the Year. Adam Thielen could be like the sixth man of the year, whatever it is called for the NFL. The Minnesota Vikings are going to have so many award winners on this team. The Vikings are going to be a scary, scary team. 13-4 is not out of the realm for the Minnesota Vikings whatsoever. They're going to beat the Packers week one. They win week two. Week three, over the, like, like over, the, over the Lions. Week four, I had them losing to the Saints. But that could be an easy win too, depending on who their quarterback is. I mean, hell... Going into the bye week, week seven, it is not unheard of if the Minnesota Vikings are going to go 6-0. Six, six, no. 
following the bye week, they beat the Cardinals. They beat the Commanders on the road. Their first loss of the season that that that, that, that like I can see not going one way or the other is Week Ten for the for the for, for the Buffalo Bills at Buffalo. Stephon Diggs is just going to go crazy and like and it like and it like end that game. And the Bills are going to be damn good. They're going to be clicking by Week Ten. They're going to be hot. I mean, I mean, I mean, and and then we see Week Eleven. It could go one way or the other. Versus the Cowboys, Week Twelve can go can can go one way or the other versus the, the Patriots, but I had them beating the Cowboys and I had them losing to the Patriots, and then finishing out the season we had them going undefeated. I have a I, I I have a loss built in there for the for the for the Giants, and that's simply just because I don't see them winning six or seven games in a row to end the season. Like so, you like you almost got to have that loss to like kind of get the trans transmission checked and get the engine all lined up and get get going again. 13 and 4 for the Minnesota Vikings. Can you guys wrap your head around that? Am I off my rocker on this one? 13 and 4 for the Vikings? Damn. Either way, the Vikings are winning are winning that division at 13 and 4. Packers are coming in at number 2 at 10 and 7. Bears are coming in at number 3 at 6 and 11 and the Detroit Lions are coming at I'm um, at 4 and 13. If fourth in that division. Sorry, Lions fans, I'm off the bandwagon officially. Vikings fans, along with the chat here, with 67% of you people uh, in the chat voting tonight. Thank you for voting. You guys had the Vikings winning as well. Uh, Lions come in in second place at 33, 33%. Packers and Bears came in at 0%. So that's going to be it for tonight, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, same time. Same location right here at youtube.com forward slash man or 8 p.m. East Coast time. If you guys are watching us on 313 The Flash, be sure to check us out on youtube.com forward slash man hour. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon. We do upload clips. And, of course, we are live every Monday through Thursday at 8 p.m. as much as I can. That being said, guys, have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow. All the good stuff. Have a great night.